Good day fellow scapers, my name's Deck, but please call me Hobo and welcome to my Dominion Tower Guide for 2024. Having recently done Dominion Tower, I found one great guide that was a little bit outdated due to the recent release of Necromancy, and I decided I really needed to test it out and blaze a trail to see how good Necromancy is at what used to be one of the worst content pieces in RuneScape history. I must say, I was pleasantly surprised. I managed to keep complete the whole tower in less than half a day with this method. Now why would I want to take on what I've just admitted is the most trash thing in RuneScape? I'll tell you why. The Dominion Tower has some phenomenal rewards. Firstly, the Dominion Tower achievements are a requirement for the Elite Desert achievements. Once you've done this, you get access to the Red Stone at Sophenum, which is the same rock as Uglog. This will allow you to make more money with Flask, or alternatively, allow you to go and get your Blessed Flask at a third of the time required. Now, of course, this is a massive step. The next two things are both PVM related and are definitely worth the aggro. Dominion Mines and Dreadnips. Both of these items have secured their places in history as being iconic in taking on bosses like Telos for stuns and of course taking on the crystals on Seriu's back for extra DPS. So for this guide, I am sorry, but I am going to be saying that you will need 99 necromancy at a minimum. This type of content is typically end game content anyway, so it is an expectation and the skill that we're going to be using here is based on accuracy and the higher your accuracy the more damage that it actually does equate to. On top of this, darkness as well as threads of fate, split soul etc, they're all super useful abilities so I'd recommend having them unlocked and at your disposal. On top of this you will also need your best magic staff or dual wield weapons. You will need to be on a normal spell book for this also. Now for magic I have a very specific revolution bar for a specific purpose but I will get into that later in the video. You will also need an offhand melee weapon as well. If you're stuck for ideas and want something relatively cheap you could go for a dry gore offhand weapon. Typically these are I believe around 30 million. I'd recommend having your best death dealer outfit on as well for the chance for an insta kill. Especially when below certain HP thresholds you can also bypass some boss mechanics with this method too. You will also be using the Vampirism Aura. In your inventory you're going to want to have the following. An Overload, Renewal and Weapon Poison++++ plus 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 Flask. Now these are actually fairly optional due to the nature of the debuffs which I'll get into later in the video. But basically if you get a No Potion debuff you actually do lose uh, your overloads etc. Which isn't a massive deal because a lot of the bosses that we take on are very very easy. Which is why I'm saying that it's fairly um, optional. That being said, if you want optimal efficiency, you want the best stats and if you're going to be starting with 99 necromancy, of course this puts you at the later end of that scale which means that you have access to better stats. You're also going to want restores, an anti-fire, your magic weapon of choice with runes, your offhand melee weapon of choice, a dominion journal which you can get by speaking to the big face in the tower, a pouch with all of your elemental runes for mid-level magic spells. I would advise filling the rest of the inventory with food, leaving one space. In terms of what you're going to be wearing, you'll want tier 90 uh, necromancy weapons at least, death dealer hood, bottoms and boots. You may as well just leave the top bare due to one of the debuffs which strips of your armor anyway. Now, I would also say that you should have some basic PVM perks attached to all of this stuff. I've linked the optimal PVM perk wiki in the description in case you need it. You'll also want a WEM book in your pocket slot and a nexus to hold your necromancy runes. This doesn't have to be the Vorkath variant, just anything that gives you a little bit more space in your inventory. Your best DPS cape. I'm wearing Zuck, the Zuck variant for Death Skulls, but if you don't have one that's absolutely fine, just don't use Death Skulls in this method. Your best amulet, preferably a Finality, but an Amulet of Souls or a Fury will be just fine. A Ring of Death, and also in your gloves I would put uh, Ice Gloves for protection against one of the monsters, which basically causes you to not be able to hold your weapons anymore. So that's what that's for. 
Now let's move on to the Dominion Tower itself. When you look at it, there's a list as long as you're on for things that need to be completed and it makes it look super complicated. You can view the full list by speaking to the strange face on the wall in the tower. Now I'm going to break it down so you know how to efficiently complete and interpret all of these challenges. What I will say is the number one rule of efficiency is turn off the taunts. They add a stupid amount of time to each kill. I've included some information at the end of the video and towards the end of the video which includes a quick full run but also a comparison of taunt with and without um, as well as a little section on how to remove the taunts if you're unsure of how to do this. Now regarding the challenges, there's basically seven challenges. The first one is reach level 25 in endurance mode. The second one is called special mode. You have to complete a bunch of different special assignments. All you have to do is open up special mode and you'll see what they are. The third one is climber mode, reach level 15 and then use the help horn, which is an item that you receive after reaching the 15th level. The next challenge is to kill each boss at least once. Now, for some of these bosses, you are only going to want to have to kill them once because they're terrible. The next one is kill at least 500 bosses. The one after that is experience each of the debuffs and buffs once. And the one after that, and pretty much the final one, is collect 20 pages for the Dominion Journal and add them all to it. Now, by completing each of these challenges, you'll likely complete every single one of the challenges available within the Dominion Tower. Now, there is also a way to maximize the chances of this, which I'll talk about next, but I need to explain something first. Every time you complete a run in one of these modes, you get something called Dominion Factor. The higher you climb on both the climber and endurance modes, the more factored that you get incrementally. So as an example, a seventh encounter in a row would be worth more than the first encounter seven times. When you finish each run, either because it's a boss that would take too long or one that you would die to, that factor is then converted into item rewards which you find in the chest at the end. The higher the factor you have, the higher the chance you'll get a journal page. Once you finish endurance, you'll want to move on to climber as it provides the highest factor as you climb higher due to the fact that you get a random buff or debuff added to your character each time you climb higher. Now, as I just mentioned, there are reasons to end a run and that's because the time it would take to finish that run wouldn't equate to the factor that you'd have gained off the back of it compared to if you'd have done three or four other runs in that time with easier bosses or debuffs. Some of the bosses that I would avoid, I've included below. So, with these, I would probably do these bosses once, then avoid them like the plague. I will say, Elvarg is a bit of a weird one. He's super easy as a boss and doesn't take long at all. However, if you have the no potion debuff, stay away from him. Your anti-fires won't work and he will hurt you and he will debuff your character constantly. And then the fight turns into a bit of a slog. Sigmund is also another boss who in theory is very easy. However, you need to hit him with a weapon special attack that you pick up off the floor, which requires 100% adrenaline. Otherwise, he actually preys against every single other attack style, and this does include necromancy. Interestingly enough, his speech still refers to it as magic. So, unless you're unless he's your starter encounter, absolutely skip him to his waste of time. So, I've talked to you about the monsters that I would probably avoid um, and showing them on the screen. In terms of other things that I would avoid, um, let's talk about buffs and debuffs. So, let me tell you what I would advise to spin or nudge. The first one, boost adrenaline. Now, as I mentioned earlier, adrenaline will be very important here, so we want as much as possible. The second one is slippery fingers. It removes one of your weapons and deposits in your inventory, which is super annoying as your damage will be either half or nil. Now, random freeze and random daze are both also really irritating as well. You'll be stood around for a while, unable to do anything but get slapped by monsters. So for that reason, where possible, I would always look to spin or nudge from these. You'll start off with the opportunity to spin or nudge three times, and this is refilled gradually as you climb up higher through the tower. But obviously, if you use more than three um, spins or nudges, you will have to just stick with what you're given. Let's talk about my favorite buffs though. The stun is brilliant. It will stun almost every opponent for 10 seconds, which means they just stand there and pretty much die while you hit them. This buff can also help you make decisions for climbing higher streaks, especially if you think you're going up against a boss you would otherwise die from. 
Lifesaver is also great if you want peace of mind for streaking high. So next up, I've included how to cancel the taunts. You'll see where my mouse is on the options for each screenshot. Pause the video if you need it for reference, but I'll be moving on to the next part of the guide now. Here are some basic rotations you could use to blitz each encounter as it comes. Now for low level creatures such as Arg, Touch of Death and Finger of Death pretty much kill him outright. You can maybe follow up with another basic if you need to, but otherwise he'll die pretty easily. Sometimes in the tower, you come across groups of enemies that I would recommend initially using Threads of Fate into a Soul Sap and then Volley of Stoles. The Statues of Temekin are a pretty good example of that where they'll give you five stacks of souls and then die after the volley. If this ability is set on cooldown and you have a Zuck Cape, then smashing a split soul into a Death Skulls would clear it in a few seconds too. Now, I was talking about magic earlier and there are some creatures that are a real pain unless you've got a solid method down. One of these is Chronozone. So with Chronozone, you have to hit him with four magic elements under the Blast category. I will repeat that under the Blast category not the surge category or any of the weaker magic spells if you manage to hit him only a couple of times before he dies and you've only used one of those magic elements he will die but then he'll reanimate and he'll probably do that a million times if you let him now to give you the best possible chance of killing him properly and him staying dead you're going to need to include your worst abilities that give the lowest damage output because he's so easy to kill this will give you an opportunity to use all four magic types spells on him um, and then basically he dies pretty easily. I would also remind you to change your action bar binding so that every time that you equip your staff or your jewel wield your bar pops up every time you equip that magic item. In terms of the rotation itself you can use something along the lines of impact, into rack, combust and then corruption. I've, corruption I know is a brilliant ability uh, but as it's damage over time it gives you that opportunity then to get off more um, abilities afterwards if you're still short. For your melee bar I would just use something that gives good damage output at the beginning and you will only be using it for creatures that need silver light as the main hand weapon. For relics I would recommend the following. Persistent Rage. Due to each encounter finishing on zero adrenaline and resetting every time, this goes a long way as you will have to wait a couple of seconds to be up against each boss. Now, if you're up against any boss with let's say 50k HP and you want to wait a couple more seconds before jumping into the encounter, you can, just so it means that you can smash them with a speck or two almost instantly and they'll die a lot easier. The next one is Fury of the Small. As I said, adrenaline is big here, so this goes a long way into giving you the adrenaline you need right off the bat to smash all the enemies. Now, I personally have a conservation of energy relic, as sometimes I'm going to use death skulls. However, if you do not have the Zuck Cape, pick another relic that you think you'll find useful. Up next, you'll see a very quick run with some taunts enabled and disabled for comparison on timings, and also me utilising some of the mechanics such as buffs, debuffs, etc. In the meantime, I would just like to say thank you for checking out my guide and would ask that if you found this video helpful, please drop a like and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps with the algorithm and I'd love to bring more content like this to YouTube. As you've seen maybe recently, RuneScape has been drying up for content creators, um, some moving over to OSRS, some giving up entirely. So this type of interaction is a real motivation for myself and you know other small time creators like me, so show us some love. In the meantime though, Feel free to check out my channel and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Happy scaping.